Hey everyone, that's the Football Index season back with a bang. I hope the first weekend was good to you. If you're new around here, please like, share, subscribe, retweet, all that good stuff, guys. We've got plenty of content on the channel for you, no matter where you are on your Football Index journey. Thanks all for tuning into the video, and let's get stuck in. And here we are, match day two, the preview, guys. Um, it's going to be an amazing match day. Let's just get stuck right into it, okay? So on the Friday... We have ourselves a single match day, okay? Now, there's going to be a lot of attention, a lot of money sloshing about on Friday night for these potential Div winners because there's going to be a few usual suspects involved, okay? So, we'll start off in France. That's just top of this little list. We have Lyon at home to Angers. Um, after the performance they put in last Friday night against Monaco, I think anything other than a Lyon win would be a shock at this stage. Um... Ongers at home, um, Leon at home at Ongers, you know, it's a pretty straightforward fixture on the face of it. Now, I expect Leon to line up fairly similar. They may have some of these guys that have come back from the AFCON, maybe get more minutes or maybe start. But otherwise, I think it'll be very much a similar team to what we've seen last Friday. We dive into the Bundesliga and the heavyweight champions of Germany are back in action. It's Bayern Munich at home again to Hertha Berlin. Okay, now Berlin should not be written off um, in terms of just the fixture in general. They've recruited pretty well throughout the summer, spent a lot of money on the boy from Watford. They've bought, brought in some centre backs. Um, that you know they've done pretty well overall. I'm not going to do this too much because we would take the video for the video would take far too long if we did this for every team. But they've recruited pretty well by and large. Um, They've got a decent enough squad, but I do see, <coughs> excuse me, I do see Munich just running over them. Um, Marco Grulich, that's who I was thinking of, Ibisevic. Um I do see um, Bayern Munich running over them, but the new coach, Ante Kovic, you know, it, it, it might be a bit of a tighter game. It might be a 4-2 win or, you know, 3-2 uh, or something like that. But I do expect Bayern to score plenty of goals and I expect them to run riot. Overall, you know, I expect them to get the three points, but Berlin should make it spicy. Uh, and then we move on to La Liga and everyone's favourite second team, probably, um, is Barcelona, away to uh, Atletico Bilbao. Now, it can be understated enough, there's actually some history in this game. I expect there'll be a fair amount of bookings. Um, there's a bit of a rivalry between these two. And uh, the kind of word from the Barcelona camp is no messy, no problem. Um, it, how, how are they going to line up? Is Messi going to be in the team? Is this going to be the midfield three? Are we going to have uh, Vidal start? Is Artur going to start? Is Coutinho going to play? Is Rakitic going to play? It's, you know, really hard to say. What I would say is a definite. Suarez will play. Griezmann will play. De Jong will play. Alaba will play. And these are the ones that are going to be in amongst the dividends on Friday night, along with the usual suspects from Bayern. Your Kimmich, Goretzka, Muller, Lewandowski, Coleman... And then with uh, Leon, Dembele, Depay, last week's winner, Toussart, um, Denier, Joachim Anderson, these kind of guys. Who's going to win the dividends on the day? It's really hard to say. It just depends on how the results actually pan out. But there is a few usual suspects there. So expect to see a lot of movement on all of them between now and really kick off on Friday. Saturday brings us back our first treble match day. Let's start with the Premier. Arsenal's the early kickoff, so if you remember all the attention last Saturday, the early kickoff got Man City, uh, Man City against oh Jesus, who was it? West Ham. Um, you might you, because the thing is right, the deadline to buy somebody for match day dividends, so best defender, best midfielder, best striker, the deadline that you can buy them for to get those dividends is two p.m. that day. So the early kickoffs, if somebody runs away with the with the fixture and scores amazingly well, like Raheem Sterling did, and Kevin De Bruyne did for a short period of the time, you will get a lot of traffic surge into them because you can basically buy the dividend um, if you get on them before two p.m. So Arsenal, Burnley, right? They've they've not had Europa League this summer. They seem much better prepared. Um, they seem back to the Burnley of old. So they might make it difficult for Arsenal but again if Arsenal turn it on and they go and blow Burnley away you could if you have any Arsenal players that contribute to that they will fly away in price come Saturday early afternoon the three o'clock games we then see Villa against Bournemouth could go either way there's also two great Scots involved in that you know McGinn and Fraser but um, I see 
this game's certainly been very competitive. How the scoreline will actually pan out, predicted scorelines in the Premier League is a mugs game, okay, but I do see the kind of the players that were getting attention in the first match day um, continuing to do well, basically, uh, throughout that match as well. It'll be a tight game, but who's going to win? It could go either way. Villa are probably slight favourites being at home. Brighton West Ham, now, if you asked me two weeks ago, I'd have said West Ham will run all over them. That might still happen. Brighton are very, very open. They'll be full of confidence after their away victory in, in match day one. But West Ham have got ground to make up after getting battered off City. And uh, we definitely seen from West Ham that, you know, it, even though they weren't really, they didn't really threaten City, they weren't very much in the game. We know what Pellegrini does. We know how he coaches the team. We know how they're going to line up. And guys like Felipe Anderson, Declan Rice, um, and Seb Hammer, you know, if they get a bit more joy than they did last week than West Ham... They really could do a, do a number on Brighton, but equally they're a bit of an unknown quantity than under Potter. Everton at home at Watford. Everton will probably, they, they drew with Palace last week. Watford, I think they get smashed, didn't they? Um, Everton being at home, they're going to de- yeah, they get smashed off Brighton. Um, Everton are going to want to get points on the board. They'll be happy with a solid draw against a solid team on match day one, but they're definitely going to want to put points on the board. Will Moise Kane feature? Will Alex Awobi feature? Will this be the new look Everton we see come Saturday? Very, very possible. And again, if one then lights up the match day, you know, they will. They may not win the media, but they will be certainly getting media points, and that's always good for capital appreciation. Norwich at home in Newcastle. Again, very, very tough one to call, but from what we've seen on Friday night, gone... Uh, Norwich will play the way they want to play and they don't make any apologies about it you know Newcastle were very tight against Arsenal very resolute and they might look to get on the ball a bit more and go and attack so again I can see this game being very very open Brucey needs the points away to Norwich that's a team that you'd have down on paper at the start of the season that they would want to be and they would be targeting for for the win you know so if Hampton Liverpool it depends what happens Wednesday night in the Super Cup or is it Thursday um, with Liverpool do they do they get any injuries? Do they put a full strength team out midweek? Southampton are on their knees after last week, getting beat off of uh, Burnley, I think it was, yeah. Uh, yeah, Burnley. So they need to bounce back big time. The week's recovery might give them a bit of an edge in the first half against Liverpool, but overall I see Liverpool winning, and it'll probably be winning in the second half. And then we come to Man City Spurs. Now this game is going to be the highlight of the weekend for a lot of traders, or basically in the Premier League it's I'd say it's the biggest fixture we're going to see. Um, De Bruyne, Sterling, these guys are on form. Kane and Dombele, we've seen them do great last weekend. And this is going to be the battle for the dividend, I think. You know, for a few positions. It may not be every position, maybe the midfielder, the striker or whatever. But I think there'll be a lot of focus and a lot of attention going there come later on Saturday afternoon. Now, when it comes to France, guys, as you've seen with the dividends that got captured last uh, Saturday... Um, you can you you always have you, you can't legislate for the random players that will step up and really play a great shift. With also the new matrix as well, it does make it harder slightly to predict who it favours and who it benefits. I mean, a few other people have been kind of hypothesising to who is actually the winners out of the new matrix, but there's nothing here I would really point your your attention towards. Nice away, obviously we had two dividend winners from them last week. Them going away to Nîmes. After getting battered off PSG, Nice could go there and those players could replicate their form very, very easily. Lille away to Amiens. Um, you know, they could beat off Nice, they could easily get beat off Neil, they probably should get beat off the Lilo. And uh, if guys like Osme, Osmehin and Wea and Nikone and Bamba and all these guys fire on all cylinders, that could be another away from home. But Lilo, if they turn it on and they get an inch, they'll take the mile, you know. Marseille, bit of a stunning start under Vias Boas. Monaco, bit of a car crash last week. Mets have a lot of potential on their team. So there's a few things to keep your eye on, but it's really difficult to say this team will win dividends or that's uh, the fixture to watch out for. It's quite an even spread across the, the French fixture list on Saturday. Saturday in the Bundesliga. Now, Bundesliga kicks off at half two, so you notice your games there kick off a bit earlier. The two things I'm really keeping my eye on is Dortmund and Leverkusen. King Kai, Kai Hyverts is back in action. They've recruited really well with Amiri and Demerbe. And I think we expect, there's a lot of love for uh, Leverkusen on the index. And I think um, if we even just look at how they lined up in the last match, I think you should expect to see a potential dividend winner come out of this group here. Aaron Guiz, he's 35 or something daft like that, but he's just as good as like your Benegas of this world, Rakitic's. He can score really, really high. Jonathan Ta, 
could become the Dante of this weekend, you know, big commanding centre half. If he scores a goal, he's winning headers, he's passing the ball out from the back into guys like Bellarabe and Demerbe and, and then find the ball forward into Havertz, he could definitely benefit from that kind of thing. And with Dortmund, we're just so excited to see, I think, the front four, who's going to be in it, how they're going to look, how many goals they're going to score. Augsburg, when you look at their friendlies there, they've not done too great, they can see there's a lot of goals, but they're not mugs, you know, as you can see in the head to head. Um, as you see in the head-to-head, -head, they've won the last time they met. Obviously, they were at home, they are away in this game. But away, a 4-3 victory for Dortmund. So it should be tight. I wouldn't be banking on clean sheets in any German game. At least so of all, one with history like that. Schalke, will they be back? Borussia Mönchengladbach, have they replaced Hazard correctly with uh, Mbolo and um, Turam? Wolfsburg, Cologne, Werder Bremen, Dusseldorf, Freiburg, Mainz. There could be one of these random players that pops up and has a great, great match and goes back some dividends. There's IPDs and a bunch of these teams um, for any players you'll be holding, guys like Weghorst and whatever. And then we look at the Saturday games for Spain, okay, and there'll be a fair bit of attention on the early kickoff. Real Madrid, are they going to beat Vigo is the first question. Who's going to line up? Who's going to score the goals? Is it going to be Hazard? Is it going to be Jovic? Is Benzema going to play? Is Vinicius going to play? Is Rodrigo going to play? A lot of question marks, so I think we'll be watching for that line-up with great anticipation. Valencia, I hope Sociedad is an interesting one. Sociedad have got a nice little recruitment policy on the go there now. They've brought in, also they had Janizai for a little while. They've got Edamendi back a few seasons ago now from Real Madrid. They've brought in Odegaard on loan. They've got that number 10 there, Oyer Zabal, who's highly thought of on the index, certainly. Gets a good reputation. But they've also brought in Alexander Isaac eh, on loan from Dortmund. And Valencia, we all know about Valencia. They've finished in the Champions League spots. They've recruited pretty well throughout the summer. Just brought in Mangala back in from City yesterday as well. So that'll be an interesting one to keep your eyes out open for. Villarreal and Chukwueze, will they come back to form? Uh, Laganes, Osasuna and Mallorca Ibar they're not anything there's nothing that jumps off the page but again you have to legislate for these random players that might go and do pretty well in a match day Sunday the attention is going to be on Chelsea and Leicester Sheffield United and Palace on paper it looks like a nil nil or a one each or something like that but again um, you, you can't predict you can't predict the score lines in the Premier League it's just a it's just a, a field game but with Leicester not playing midweek Chelsea going to Istanbul Chelsea getting beat so heavily off Man U. And Leicester will probably be relatively content with their draw against uh, Wolves, considering the points that Wolves took off teams last season. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I think um, if there's going to be a shock upset, and I say shock quite loosely just because of the position the teams are in, but Leicester, if they did well, I would not be surprised at all. PSG is the late Sunday night kickoff again, so guys like Verratti and Marquinhos will be right back in amongst it. Uh, Sobel and Bappe, uh, Cavani, I think there's a rumour he might be leaving. Uh, Di Maria, Draxler, all these types of guys will probably be the pick of the bunch. But St Etienne, I've got Budaboos back in the squad, um, and I've got a few other players that have been pretty good for PB over the last season or two. And Strasbourg were pretty solid last week, and they've got a few players that guys like Lala, and there's another guy who begins with an L up front, Lube Bio or something. They could do some damage. And then when it comes to Sunday in the Bundesliga, we've got two great fixtures. So Hoffenheim, Frankfurt, the two two of the most exciting teams in the Bundesliga last year, but big change. Hoffenheim have lost Jolington, they've lost Amiri, they've lost Demerby. Frankfurt have lost Jovic and Haller and Jetro Williams. So my my underdog in there is Kramerich. I think if he starts, he's going to become a babe again. Um, I'm surprised he's still at Hoffenheim, but he could easily win best striker. Uh, on Sunday if he plays and scores a few goals just the, the way he plays and then we've got my favourite at the moment Leipzig away to Berlin now Berlin newly promoted they've did pretty well in pre-season against like lower class opposition but when you see them against Wolfsburg Vigo um, and the other decent teams Stuttgart okay, she, no that's probably in the league last season nothing much to write home about whereas um Leipzig have had a great pre-season, lots of players have got a very busy young attacking squad and um, I want to see some Leipzig players in amongst the PB, they should be in amongst the IPDs almost certainly. La Liga we then come to uh, the real standout game there is Atletico, the Madrid derby, Atletico versus Getafe, we're all excited to see João Felix and uh, Kieran Trippier and uh, these types of guys, Lamar. 
come back into the four Diego Costa um, and I think we'll have a dividend winner from Atletico Madrid on the Sunday um, maybe a defender maybe Jimenez something like this you know Renan Lodi trip here or something but uh, Sevilla against Espanyol will also be a tasty affair Betis with Fekir in their team against Valladolid um, so th there is a few bits of potential there some good games depending on who you're holding some good chances for them to get some spotlight some IPDs for you and then we have a Monday night fixture which is going to be Wolves at home at Man United. Famously, Wolves did pretty well in this fixture last year. Man, you'll be full of confidence. <coughs> Wolves won. <laughs> Man, you didn't get any point, didn't get any victories against them. But Wolves have a Europa League game this week. They will be playing Thursday, I think. Yeah, against. They're at home at least, so not a lot of travelling for them. But I think they'll fancy their chances after a solid draw in Leicester. And um, the record they had against Man U last year, I think you could see some good action there. Because it's the only game on the Monday night, you know, if you're backing guys like Pogba, Rashford, Martial, Luke Shaw, Juan Bissaka, Man United players have got a great chance to pick up a bunch of dividends on Monday night. Um, even with a 1-0 win, you know, they don't need to beat Wolves emphatically. But they've got that benefit of they played Sunday, they're not playing again until Monday. Long rest period for Man United after the hectic pre-season they've had. They should be regenerated and ready to rock and roll. But never discount wheels, guys. Okay, so that's the, the the match day two preview. Okay, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot more um, variables getting brought into the equation. I think we're going to see a couple of shocks like your Cyprians and your Dantes again. But I think a few of the div magnets will come back through to the four, like your Kimmiches and and Bappes, These types of guys, just with the fixtures the way they're laid out. So just to reiterate, Friday is a single match day. Saturday is a treble. Sunday is a double. Uh, let me just double check that and Monday of course will be the single so Monday two five seven yep it's a double okay so action packed weekend guys thanks for tuning into the video if you are new around here like share subscribe retweet drop your comments below I love interacting with you guys stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one take care bye bye